filmmaking is all about subjectivity and being experiential. And so the idea that I could actually physically skateboard with the camera and then have skateboarders bust the frame really allowed me to be their POV and have them enter it, which is not something that I've had the opportunity to do. Obviously, you know, steady cam running is maybe the closest you can get, but the nice thing about this camera too is that you can adjust height. Just like a very involved way to be able to go from low to high, it puts that control back in my hands. I mean, I've been very fortunate to work with some of the best steady cam operators in the world, but sometimes it's nice to just roll around on a one wheel and then shoot your friends while they're skateboarding. The concept of the Z axis is to have this extra sort of vertical, I don't know, to eliminate like footsteps, any extra vertical movement, unwanted vertical movement, I suppose. And so when we were in this like very kind of bumpy, rocky terrain or trying to send these like rock scrambles, it came in really handy. Especially on bumpy roads, really trying to be a fixed, you know, fix everything about my handheld position to kind of keep it as steady as I can. But now to have the freedom to like raise the camera up and get a slightly higher angle looking down or be able to like pan. I mean, you can make little dolly moves just like by moving the camera. That's something that I hadn't even really thought about or, or thought about how that could be useful. It's so foreign nature to me to set something on a screen and let it go. Like that is not in my wheelhouse normally, but I found it really useful. It's the kind of thing that Steadicam is able to do because they can look forward while, they're, while their rig is pointing backwards, which I've never had that freedom. When I'm handheld, I'm handheld. So I'm either walking back grip, holding onto me and trying to make sure I don't bite it or under song maybe, but like it's very hard to kind of have eyes in, the, in both directions. It was a revelation and also kind of terrifying that I could kind of set Lizzie in the frame, look forward, look at like the rocks under my feet and just know she was still gonna be in the frame when I turned back around, but it worked. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's mind blowing to me that like ENG cameras have had internal NDs since probably the seventies and it's taken cinema cameras like another three decades to figure it out. But to have internal NDs and one-stop NDs with the touch of a finger, I mean, it, it makes such a difference. Like putting the control back in the operator's hand, it's, it's great. The menus were really intuitive and the things that you use most, like internal NDs, like ISO, like shutter angle, like are all very easy to access and you're not accidentally bumping things that you shouldn't be, anything can be locked. Like the integration of sort of automatic functionality and manual functionality seems to be, you know, pretty intuitive. At the end of the day, as we were starting to lose light after the sunset, I flipped from 800 to 5,000 ISO, and it's pretty incredible. You, know, you buy yourself an extra probably 20 to 30 minutes easy. You have you know, definition in the sky still and in the scan, and you can light an entire scene with, with the headlights of a car. It's often hard to be a one-man band, you know, and, and to have that control where you can lead somebody on a one-wheel or on a Segway or on a golf cart or move in a, a car. I think there's probably a lot of really dynamic things you could do in, in a documentary sense. I still feel very green with this camera, but after one day, I feel like I see the potential for what it could be. And I think that there uh, are really exciting possibilities for what people can do, especially at like a prosumer level. So I think by giving a singular person the ability to like make these tracking moves, to do these complicated, potentially complicated setups, it just enhances the idea of a subjective experience and like singular vision. And then you, you, know, you take somebody who has a really specific idea for something and they can execute it themselves. And I think it, it could lead to some really cool independent filmmaking.